Hello, welcome to the uh, Busy Guy Show. My name is Vince Lacasio, and I'm a busy guy. I've got a busy lady here. Her name is Cindy Dawson. She's the general manager of the soon to be open Zanies Comedy Club in Rosemont. Cindy, welcome to the club. I'm thrilled to, the show. to be here. Thanks. I'm excited. Yeah. This is big time, Vince. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is not your first rodeo doing Rosemont. You've been managing the Zanies at St. Charles. It, uh -huh. Yeah, I have been with Zanies for probably about 15 years, and I ran the St. Charles Zanies Comedy Club out there at Pheasant Run for about the last 14 years. So I am I'm so excited to be doing this. Nice. It's, we're building it from the ground up. It's a new experience. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about the club uh, and the whole uh, Rosemont Park area that's going to be happening. But how does one uh, become a comedy club manager? <laughs> I, mean, I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I well, gotta be honest start? with you, Vince. I just uh, sort of fell into it. I uh, I worked for Montgomery Wards. I was a marketing manager for Montgomery Wards and left before the bankruptcy. Nothing to do with that. Not my fault. Monkey Wards. <laughs> um, and then I stayed home with my kids for ten years. I was a stay-at-home mom, and I wanted to go back just to sort of doing something to get out of the house for a little bit. And uh, I saw an ad for cocktail waitressing, and I cocktailed all throughout college. And I went to Zanies and. And after like six months or a year, I was like, this club should be way better than, than it is. It, it, there's, it's such a great club. I just sort of fell in love with stand-up comedy. And uh, a year later, the owner asked me if I would run the room, and I've been doing it ever since. So you, uh, being all around it this much, have you ever done stand-up or <laughs> had an occasion to no. do you laugh? No. Well, I'm telling you, I, uh, I was on the debate team, the varsity debate team in high school. I can speak in front of cameras on a live show <laughs> on cameras and I can speak in front of you know 1500 people that doesn't bother me at all to get up and to be funny in front of 15 20 people even is absolutely terrifying it is just it's because your reaction I mean if you don't get what you're looking for I think it's one of stand-up comedy it's you on the stage alone I think stand-up comedy is one of the hardest things in the world to master yeah, and, and you've seen uh, people experience all those uh, things, you know, trying, <laughs> dying. I will, I will tell you, and my uh, regulars in these comics know this, there is nothing funnier to me as a manager than seeing somebody I know is a really good comic just go up there and eat it. Yeah. If I know they're a great comic and they are just having a hard time with the audience, there's nothing funnier to me or the rest of the comics in the back of the room just to watch them struggle with it. Now, it's a different story to watch somebody that you know is not a good comic, mm -hmm. like at another club or what, you know, if that's uncomfortable. But to watch somebody that I know is a good comic, because that so rarely happens, it's Because you know they're fun. capable of it. Well, yeah, it's show. fun for us. I know how funny they are, and it's, it's really fun for the management as well as the other comics to watch that. So I, and I see you, you judge competition. So what do you bring to the table? Obviously, your experience of seeing all these com uh, comics. Yeah, um, I've judged all kinds of, we have the World Series of Comedy coming up just in June in St. Charles. The regionals have been held there for a couple years. Uh, I've judged the regionals and then I've been to Vegas the past three years in a row to judge the National World Series of Comedy. And I'll judge the, the shows out there and then I'll give a workshop on for young comics just starting sort of on the do's and don'ts of stand-up comedy and, and how to get in and what to do once you get there. and. And those are all, at the World Series of Comedy, it's meant for the feature comic level, which is the guys that are just breaking into it. Okay. And they're so eager to learn, and they will soak up. We do a meet and greet, and I think I talked for four hours straight with a line of comics just wanting to get into it. And I've, don't get me wrong, I've also judged yeah. something called Snub Fest, which is for um, all the comics that didn't get invited to the other festivals. <laughs> so they had their own little snub fest festival. That's pretty cool. Uh, it was a blast. I just, I just got back from Iowa, Diamond Joe's Casino out there, judged a um, Comedy 10K where the winner won $10,000. Dave Couillet was there and, and they had the top comedy managers um, from across the country. They were from New York, LA, Florida, Nashville, so it was a blast. We had so much fun. And I did mention that you are a busy lady, obviously, just for I am. <laughs> Uh, and you were busy enough to make time for us, <laughs> our show today. But tell me, what is uh, Psycho Babble? Psycho Babble is another Comcast cable show um, that is run by comics, completely done by comics. Mike Preston, who's a, just a comic editing genius, um, runs Psycho Babble. 
It's a little bit different than your show, Vince. <laughs> not, all, not only can you swear, you're encouraged to show. swear, yeah. but, but it's just skits. And, and Mike, if you've looked at the website, it's psychobabbletv.com. He gets all the top names in interviews. He music. sure does. I, I do I, entertainment I, reporting. Yeah, it's it's music, it's sports, it's you know entertainment, it's comics, it's it's the weird little festivals that you, being from Rosemont, know exist here all the time. The the odd ones. And he <laughs> is a stand-up. He is a stand-up. He's worked my room quite a bit. He was one of my house MCs out in St. Charles. He's done some feature work. He's done some corporate things for me. Mike is an amazing stand-up comic, and, and yeah, you've checked out the Psycho Babble shows. Yeah, They're fun. I, uh, <laughs> let, well, then let's talk about Zanies. It was founded uh, by Rick Hewitt in Chicago in Old Town. Yep. Um, That's before Old Town was the area that it is now, even. Back in yeah. those days, that area was a little bit sketchy. Well, it went from whatever, the, like the hippie area era, and then it had some downtime, and that's when Rick kind of and yep. other pioneers for that area came in. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was an amazing man. He had this vision. Uh, we just lost Rick last May, about a year ago, um, to cancer. He had a vision for stand-up comedy before anybody knew what stand-up comedy was. And he was not a stand-up? No, not at all. He, uh, he lived an amazing life. Uh, he was wounded in Vietnam. He uh, just, uh, just, the tales go on and on before he even started Zanies. Um, and back in 1978, he had a vision to start this stand-up comedy place. It, the place he has in Old Town was a strip club. And if you, uh, if you stand on the stage now, you can still see the catwalk lights <laughs> like they oh, yeah. used to be there. Um, he had it as a strip club. That's when he first got it. And then he turned it into Zanies. He had this vision for stand-up comedy. And nobody knew what stand-up comedy was. There was improv back then, and there was theater. But stand-up comedy was just so foreign to everybody. And Rick stuck with it. The first show they opened up, I, I remember four people, I think, in the audience. Yeah. Well, there's some comments I read. Uh, you know, somebody called them and asked them, the stand-up comedy means there's no chairs to sit Absolutely. there. Absolutely. When they first opened, that's what people had no idea what stand-up comedy was. And Rick, God bless him, just kept going and going and going with it. And slowly but surely, the public caught on and liked stand-up comedy. And obviously, then we went through the big, huge stand-up comedy boom in the 80s. He was way ahead of its time. Okay. The big, huge stand-up comedy boom in the 80s where everybody was a stand-up comic. And every room that had you know, a mic in it became a comedy club. And there, it just was crazy. We were yeah. seven nights a week everywhere. Well, you mentioned that was another growing pain. And from what I, you know, my research that uh, you mentioned Second City, and a lot of it, not a part of it, was the overflow from people that couldn't get into Second City if it was booked. And stand up was a whole different thing, right? right? I mean, they were going yeah. there to see improv. Um, I read that there was a point where they put a blow up dolls into in the seats <laughs> to make it, people looked in the windows. It I, like, I can believe like it was that, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, Second City, we've been great neighbors with them for, for you know, 30 years. Um, that's improv. We have always said, and actually Rick, the owner of Zanies, has always said, we don't fear bad, good competition, we fear bad competition. Yeah. Because, you know, you throw a mic in the middle of a bar and call it a comedy club. Well, somebody goes there, and then the next time they go, we want to go to Zanies. Now nah, I went to a comedy club once, yeah. I didn't like it. We don't fear good competition, we fear bad competition. Interesting. So we love the good competition. And, and some of his advice to you was, um, well, you can use, do the quote, but the, <laughs> the business, keep it clean, because I know. Yeah, that, I won't tell all the whole quote that I told you yeah. in the green room. <laughs> um, but when we started, Rick told me, sweetheart, this is a business based on relationships, not numbers. If the relationships come, the numbers will follow. Mm -hmm. And he was right. Our, our comics, you are busy. I, I got a phone call. You're busy Hello. Uh, hey, uh, open the door. I've been pounding on it for 20 minutes. Who is this? Ben Morango. Who do you think it is? Your guest. Yeah, Ben. Yeah, but I'm doing a show right now. I know. I'm supposed to be on it. I got security here. They're ready to get rid of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, this guy's supposed to be on my show tomorrow, so I'll be just a minute. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> hey, Ben. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, like I said, I'm doing a tape-in right now, so maybe I could call you back when this show's over. Well, 
what am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm, I got my guitar, <laughs> I'm waiting out here. I, I don't know. Um, let me call you back when this one's over, all right? Well, I guess. All right, Ben. I, yeah, I'll call you back. Okay, bye. I'm sorry. You are a busy guy. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I try to do my scheduling, but this guy, I don't know if, if he's supposed to be here tomorrow or what. But <laughs> anyways, well, we're talking Back about, to Zanies. We're, talk, we're back to Zanies. Um, yeah, Rick, uh, Rick has always been a huge supporter. He has worked with the greats. Jay Leno and he were great friends up until the end. Jerry Seinfeld, all the big names that started 30 years ago. And these guys weren't big names, obviously, no, when they started. No, no. They all pop in when they're downtown, and they're very loyal to Zanies because Rick has always been loyal, and, and it's a Zanies family, it really is, with our comics and our staff and our customers. It's, it's some of the greatest names in the business are like, you're lucky to be involved in the Zanies family. Nice. It's, yeah. We talked about... Uh, you know, there's so much available on research that I was able to do, but I read about how he wanted to keep it intimate. You know, people, it was 100 seats down there. Um, because yeah. what, the audience <laughs> plays off of each other as well as the comics? You know, stand-up comedy was designed and meant to be done in an intimate setting. Zanies does that. Um, some of these other big theaters, if you're going to go to a theater and, and see a comic and pay $60 to see a comic at a theater, you should probably stay home and watch their Comedy Central special because really it's a different show. Yeah. Comedy and, and the comics love the intimate setting. Comedy was meant to be done in an intimate setting, stand-up comedy. Now, improv is more theatrical and they play off the audience, but it's more of a theater setting. Stand-up comedy was meant to be done how Zanies has always done it and still does it today in a small, intimate setting with a smaller stage. And uh, the Rosemont Room just is going to, absolutely exemplify that it's it's going to be amazing and you mentioned it's state-of-the-art meaning well, obviously with the sound system and all that but what what else can you tell me because you mentioned a little bit about how everybody's got a good seat yeah the the room we're building in rosemont at the mb financial park at rosemont out here is uh is built for stand-up comedy from the ground up we've never been able to really have that and it's, Zanies is very old school. Uh, old <laughs> school works. Well, and it does. And we're still going to keep everything. that old school feel. But each one of our clubs has a different sort of personality. The downtown room is very small and was a strip club and is a, uh, just a historical landmark, basically, where, for comedy. All the comic, the greats work there. Comics love to play there. St. Charles, we're in a resort in a barn. Uh, it's the top floor of a barn. And the Rosemont Room is going to maintain the intimate setting with sort of a Vegasy type feel. Zany's uh, is going to, it seats 250 people out there in Rosemont. It, when we say state of the art, I mean the sounds and the light, the sound system and the light system. And, the, you know, we're going to have a screen that comes down. We're going to have technical capabilities that we've never had in any of the other rooms. But we've still done an excellent job of maintaining the intimate comedy club experience, which means low ceilings, really tight, you know, tight seating, um, great seating. There's going to be a VIP. We're in Rosemont, so yeah. there's a lot of corporates, a lot of groups, a lot of um, hotels, I mean, hotels and sort. VIPs. We are going to have a VIP section. We're also we have a corporate section for groups. Um, every seat faces the stage. The furthest seat from the stage, I think, is like 30 feet. So you'll be able to see facial expressions. And, and we're also booking that room, that Zany's, as, as just a tear it up room. I mean, the, the comics are going to be fast, high energy, and just the, some of the greatest acts in the business. I mean. To back up a bit, because obviously Roseman is the latest and the greatest, but uh, how did they pick St. Charles? It's, uh, it's a resort. St. Charles, we, we actually worked with uh, the McArdle family that owned Pheasant Run Resort at that time. Um, and they wanted a comedy club out there. We wanted to head out to the suburbs. Um, we had Mount Prospect, and, and we sort of expanded west. Everybody was going west at that time. That's been 23 years that yeah. uh, that, that one is open. And they gave us the top of a barn, <laughs> and, uh, and we've been there ever since. Told a few jokes. It's, you know what? It's a fun setting. Comics love to rip on the room that they're in, and the barn was just was great. I mean, it's it's still a great room. I, I ran that for 14, 15 years and just uh, trained a replacement out there, and she's out there continuing on the tradition. It's still a great room. 
and, uh, and then I'm what? on to Rosemont. And then Nashville, though. Nashville. Why, I have to ask, I mean, nothing to take away from Nashville, the, the, the logical why thing Nashville? seems not, why not New York <laughs> and Los Angeles? Have you been asked this question uh, you before? You know what, I think it's funny that you're like, why Nashville? <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, um, I asked my the guy on the... You know what? We're not really a New York, L.A. type club. We're not really a New York, Vegas, L.A. We're a Midwest, hometown, intimate, you know, club. We're in Chicago. We're not in the Loop or in Old Town. We're, uh, you know, Nashville was, honestly, the guys that ran the Vernon Hills one wanted to branch off and, and start and open up one in Nashville. They wanted to move there, so they opened up one down there. And it's been very successful. It's, yeah, it's about 20 some years. Ago. Yeah, if you can get that one has a huge balcony on top, and a lot of the country stars come in that one. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't want to be in trouble in Nashville. I'm just asking. No, Nashville's great. And the guys yeah. that run that are the Dorfman brothers that used to run Vernon Hills. They are some of the funnest guys you'll ever meet. <laughs> okay, if we can, because you've been around it so much, and to be fair, but, but what comments you'd like to make about women in comedy? Like, are there more challenges for girls, ladies that are trying to get into the business absolutely now? I think in general what I've seen over my years is run women have it harder from the get-go you know when you announce <coughs> excuse me when you announce your next act and you see a girl walk up stage or when you say Emily Galati and automatically 60 percent of the audience goes ah oh, they rolls their really? eyes. oh my god it's a chick yeah um but some of the greatest so I, names ever well I agree with you I agree with you but those women worked very, very hard to get where they're at. And those are tough chicks. Yeah. On, you know, Phyllis Diller, Joan Rivers, the people that you're talking about. Lisa Lampanelli has pretty much gotten to the top of her game right now, too. But those are all tough, tough yeah. women. Um, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr. They all have the same personality. Um, and I think, uh, like I said, I think it's tougher for women right off the bat because half the audience is going to go, ugh. Girls aren't funny. And that's just not true. In, in Chicago locally, Patty Vasquez, Emily Galat, I mean, we have so many great local female comics as well. I just think, uh, I, I think it's harder for women to begin with, plus then they have to travel with guys. You know, I mean, comics start as road comics, and uh, I think it's much harder for women to get into that road warrior mentality than it is for guys. Um, Plus, there's always questionable sleeping arrangements. Yeah. I mean, it's a comedy condo, and all the comics stay together somewhere. We don't do that at Zany's. But a lot of the stories I've heard about condos, oh, yeah, we all had to share a, a two-bedroom condo. I mean, I just think it's, it's tougher for women, um, and especially if they have a family. You know, Patty yeah. Vasquez has two kids. Her, her husband is a stay-at-home dad, so it works for them. Um, I, I just think people's perception, and I, would, I, I really would love to change that. Yeah. But people's perception right off the bat. Denise Ramsden is one of my favorite Chicago comics. Um, she actually won the regional World Series of Comedy out here in Chicago and placed fourth in the Nationals. And, and people were stunned that there was a girl in the finals at the Nationals. Just, I, I just wish people would give them a little bit more of a chance without that wall that they put up when women come on stage. Well, it's very interesting to hear because I don't know if people even take that into mind, uh, you know, but that it is from the light you're putting on the subject, it is harder for women to get into the country. Absolutely. So you got to salute the ones that do persist and encourage the ones that want to get into it. Uh, Absolutely. That you have to persist. There are some funny women out there. They, they're really You're cracking uh, me up right now. <laughs> I'm not funny. We already went over that. Yeah. I don't do right. stand-up. Okay. <laughs> uh, what about uh, comedy teams? You don't see that. Right? I mean, some of the biggest names, Martin Lewis, Laurel and Hardy. You know, that was so long ago, really. Um, Cheech and Chong. I don't know which ones you're going to remember. <laughs> <laughs> All before my time, oh, yeah. Vince, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the comedy team issue is... What? Hey, I, I don't... Uh, what's going on? Who's that? Are you... Ban Morango. How many times do we have to go over this? I, I, look, I told you on the phone I'd call you yeah, back. What, what are you talking about Tuesday? I'm supposed to be here oh, in no. Mount Prospect on Monday. Today is Monday, and I'm here in Mount Prospect. Let's see. This is Elmhurst. What? There's, well, there's a couple Comcast studios. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, man, I, I came all the way here to promote my new A-Track, Blood on the Trucks. Yeah, I got my new A-Track <laughs> here. Oh, man. So 
when I was hitchhiking, they told me that I told oh, them I had no. to go to Comcast Studios, and they brought me. Well, what do you do you, on the show? I mean, why? Well, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt this. I'm this sorry, too. sweetheart. I, I, I see. You know. Yeah. I understand what it's like, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 a track. My new a track. Blood on the trucks. <laughs> a new a track. How, how many do you have of these? One. No, I got another one too. So <laughs> here, here. Yeah, I got two of them. I got two of them. I don't. You know, you don't want to press too many at the beginning, and you, you know, you, you and drink yourself. So, well, uh, <laughs> but so, oh, oh man, man, so I'm at the wrong studio. Is yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Do you have the address for the uh, prospect one? No, if you I wait till after the, I'm done taping, or I could, you know. Could you take me over there? I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, don't I hitchhiked. <laughs> I hitchhiked to get here. Well, don't. You, you know, what, no. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I'm a busy guy, right? I'm very busy. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Ben, but you know what? I, I'm interviewing this lovely lady here. She runs Zany's Comedy Club. All right, then I'm at the wrong place. I don't know what to tell you. Well, uh, you know what? There might be some beer in the back. Beer? You like beer? Oh. Got that straight. <laughs> All right, I, when I'm done here, Ben. Yeah. Wow. That was weird. Yeah, very. Do your doors not lock? Show. I don't know. <laughs> How does a guy like that get past your security, Vince? <laughs> I don't know. They're all downtown working NATO. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, he's lucky he stumbled into uh, Elmhurst as opposed to downtown yeah. somewhere then. <laughs> nice guy, but wow. An eight Time... track. He is right in with yeah, the and he's got 1980s. Two of them. <laughs> oh, my God. Timing is everything. That's funny. <laughs> uh, speaking of hecklers. Speaking of, <laughs> speaking of to our next subject. How do, hecklers. You know, from the tapes that I've been watching, there's even a heckler's blog. Not yeah. not telling people how to heckle, but how comedians handle them. Yeah. Um, what have you seen? I'm sure you've seen your share over the years. I have seen. You know what? <clears throat> At Zany's, we don't really promote that. A lot of comedy clubs, especially back in the day, used to be a shot and a beer and heckle. And, and oddly enough, people think that's what you're supposed to do when you mm -hmm. go to a comedy club. Um, we don't usually let that go too far if it irritates other people in the audience. I have the comics that I know can handle them. Um, my favorite store, is that him again? I don't know. No, I'm not gonna take this call. I'm it's him guy. again, I, isn't I, it? I, <laughs> you are a busy yeah, guy. Yeah, I'm busy guy. I'll take this call later. <laughs> I like your ringtone, though. <laughs> you can tell it's a new phone. I haven't even taken the time. I don't to know do how to turn it off. Okay. <laughs> One of my favorite it's hecklers. A heckler, I'm sorry. <laughs> It might be Billy Gardell right. calling right now, trying out. to do that. Okay. Uh, Billy Gardell, who has now just hit fame with Mike and Molly, the Mike and Molly TV show, just really one of my favorite comics in the country, was in my room, and I had seen Billy work several times, and it was a bachelorette party, and, and sometimes they come in a little bit overserved, let's say. Um, one woman was just obnoxiously drunk, just... And I, I have door guys, and it's their job to maintain the integrity of the show. Just like a for bar. Everybody. I mean, it is a bar. Yeah, and, and you know what? We're very nice about it, but three strikes, you're out. Uh, my door guy said something to this woman once, and then uh, she kept going. And I saw Billy, like, sort of eye her up. And uh, my door guy was going over again. And I go, no, wait, just wait. Billy Gardell went off on this woman. She left the showroom in tears, like in tears. The minute she left, I turned to my bouncer and I said, that's why he's one of my favorite comics. Nice. <laughs> Just, and Larry Reeb and, and, you know, we specifically book comics that, know, Jimmy Schubert's another one that just really, you don't want to mess with it. And yeah. honestly, there's comics that can do way more damage to somebody than I can do by throwing them out. And those are the guys I kind of let run with it, yeah. you know, but otherwise, if, it, if you're bothering somebody else around you, I have a problem with that because everybody should deserve a good show. Yeah, I mean, why come the guys working hard to be up there? To everybody around there came to have a good time. You right. Know, don't try to, to technically, technically, they're trying to steal the show and be the funny one. Well, and that's it. Funny. And and until your name's on the marquee and people are are paying to see you, then I'm gonna yeah. ask you to be quiet, probably. You know, which kind of leak? <laughs> oh no. Are you kidding me? Hey, you know, I, ben, I just thought as long as I'm here and all, yeah, you know, and I got my guitar and, of course, my new A track, <laughs> Blood on the Truck. <laughs> As long as I'm ben. here, I thought, you know, yeah, hell, I'm here, you know? You know what? Can, you Play can a little music. Out. No, hang out. Can I just ask her a couple more questions? Oh, sure. I'll be quiet as a mouse. You won't even know you that sure? I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> How, who's even got an 8-track player? It's, Besides I know, you. It's, it's, pretty, it's, uh, it's high tech. It's high tech. 
You know, um, I, I, I guarantee you, when you check billboards, top 100 eight track sales, <laughs> you're going to see it on there. No, go I, ahead. I Don't think let me bother I think you. you kind of stole the title from Bob Dylan, though. Did no, that's blood, blood on the tracks. No, blood on the trucks. Oh, you're just blood trucks. on the trucks. Blood on the trucks. <laughs> see, trucks. Well, I mean, we can get a little plug while you're here. Yeah, there it is. Blood my brand on new the trucks. <laughs> um, Cindy, I'm sorry. Really? I know. Well, you I know what? I'm just going to answer a couple questions. Sure. Okay, because I might Don't have let to me go bother on. you. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. Um, for speaking of people, we're talking about hecklers that want to be funny. Uh huh. Zanies offers what? Comedy classes? What can you tell we me about do. that? We do. Actually, we have a, a comic that's been doing it for years. Dobie Maxwell, amazing, was a, uh, a DJ on WLUP for a while. He's been doing stand up for 30 years. Uh, he teaches these comedy classes, not only just for stand-up comics, but mm. we've had sales teams take them. Anyone that wants to, to do better and use humor Maybe and speak uh, Yeah, well, Ben could probably think? use a... Uh, I, you know, I've, I've been told that I'm funny, but uh, I don't think they really meant it in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'm going to finish up with you later, I promise. Little, oh, okay. Don't go anywhere. Uh, I won't. Um, he, I don't think he's going to. No. I've got to be honest with you, Vince. <laughs> What? I don't think you could make him. <laughs> okay, we're kind of running out of time, so let me let me give you. What do you want to tell me about Rosemont? I know there's a ribbon cutting coming up, July. It, 6th. it is. We're so excited about it. July sixth, uh, six forty-five. The mayor's going to come and cut the ribbon to open the doors. And July sixth and seventh, we're sort of doing what we call a soft opening, and then our big grand opening is on July fourteenth. It's a Saturday night. Uh, first show is going to be a lot of VIP invites. Um, a lot of people that have helped us open the club throughout the past year. Um, but then the second show is also the same grand opening night, which is the comics of WGN TV. Oh, nice. Uh, Mike Toomey, Pat Tomasulo, Anna Bellaval, Pat McGann, all the guys from the WGN Morning Show, um, and that have also been on a TV show called the Chicago Stand Up Project, which is it was Zany's produces as well. And so, those are celebrities attempting to. They're celebrities. Yeah, the Chicago Stand Up Project. We've had Jared Payton. We've had you know Shawnee Davis and the guys from WGN. People that aren't known for being stand up comedies, we comics, we take them, we we take a week with them, we train them. Pat McGann trains them, and then they do five minutes at Zany's. Ron Kittle did another, was another one. Okay, so if anybody wants to find out, go to Zany's.com. Zany's.com. Where do they find you? You know what? I I actually uh, performed at a Zany's. I performed at the Zany's in Vernon Hills. Did you? And how did you know how to get it, there on the right day? It, it, <laughs> it, clo well, it closed down shortly uh, after. Here's some cannolis for you to take oh, with you. Oh, thank you. I'll I heard there were beer. cannolis. Yo, uh, some yeah. bear flavored cannolis. That sounds <laughs> you <know>? good. <laughs> well, you kind of threw my whole night into whack here, so I'm gonna have to excuse myself. The call? Because I, well, yeah, I gotta figure out what that other call was about. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you. What a pleasure. Thank you, as always. You know what? You got some time. That's the nice guitar you got there. Oh, thanks. If you want to, uh, well, you, you know, leave I, me? I'll tell you what I'd yeah. like to do. I'd like to get to know this little lady right <laughs> over here a little bit. <laughs> Take it easy, okay? Uh, I would. But go ahead and play software, whatever you want to do. I got to go. Bye. See hey. you guys. All right. Okay, all wait. right. Let, thanks, Vince. Let me not block my A track. So. <laughs> Want to hear a little music? This is uncomfortable. I don't know that I have a choice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should get a little closer. Uh, how about, uh, you look like you uh, like drinking. You like drinking? I do. <laughs> uh, this is a song that I wrote uh, the day I was in rehab. I, I, I drank heavily for many years. Then I was in rehab for a day. And I wrote this. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> Just lost my wife. Ain't that life. Thinking about drinking again My truck, it won't start at the lot at Walmart Thinking about drinking again My kid ran away and my dogs are all gay When will my good luck start? IRS man come in and he said, guess what Ben? Start thinking about drinking